So I came across a few problems um, when I was working <coughs> as a secondary school teacher in the UK and I found that it transferred across to the ELT sector as well. So uh, in the UK you're constantly observed and you're asked to use media. Use media all the time, uh, use uh, different forms of um, material to make sure students are engaged and obviously that's what we want to do in the ELT uh, classrooms as well. But what about if you come across a really eager bunch of GCSE students or very serious adult learners who ask, what is the point of this? I don't want to do it. So some students um, resist media clips and music in class, especially exam students. Um, why do they do this? A lot of the time they say it's irrelevant. I'm, I'm, this has no meaning for me. I don't see the point of it. Stop wasting my time. I've got six weeks until my IELTS exam, or I have six months until my A levels. This isn't helping me. And they might ask, what's the educational value? It's fun, I'm entertained, but I'm, I don't see the educational value. So, um, what I needed to do then was to embed uh, media into my lessons. And I had to make sure that students saw the value of it um, and that they saw it as a text um, as part of the content rather than something tagged onto the beginning or tagged onto the end as a little reward. It needed to become the main content of the lesson and to have real meaning and purpose. So, what you're going to do now is with your little mini whiteboards and your pen, you're going to listen to a song, okay? And I'm going to split you in half, sort of. <laughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, and anyone else who wants to join in, okay? So you six over here, you've got your mini whiteboard, and you're going to write down what emotions you hear in the song, okay? And you're also going to write down if there's a conflict of emotions. So you could write anger versus sadness, um, happiness versus frustration, okay? So that's what this six are focusing on. The other half, you're going to think about what the singer is addressing. Or, sorry, who the singer is addressing. And is there a message in the lyrics? So you're going to use your mini whiteboards to write down the answers to these questions. Okay. And now I just have to hope this works. Oh, it's open. Yeah, sorry. Perfectly perfect. So this is just going to play for about a minute and a half, so don't panic. Okay, so now I want you to hold up your whiteboards and show everybody else what you saw. So emotions we see, desire, hope, frustration, I can't see down the back. Do you want to tell me down the back what you saw? Um, the person you're speaking to, a partner or people in general, it could be other maybe. Yeah. The message, you can't make it on your own, you need to talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, Chris, who did you think he was addressing? I thought it was first partner, but then it could have been sibling as well. Okay. Anyone else have anything different? Himself. <laughs> maybe himself, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a couple anyway, because it's actually the same soul. I think it's Bob Geldof, I always think it's Bob Geldof. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what other emotions? Are there any conflicts of emotions? Any opposing ideas? Yeah, fear, yeah. hope. Yeah. Um, acceptance and resistance. Acceptance of the situation, but also arguing mm -hmm. against it. Yeah. Um, entreating, but also maybe dictating the society. Mm -hmm. Great. Great emotions as well. Yeah, there's a lot of conflict in there. Yeah, it's a troubled soul. <laughs> okay, great. So I want you to remember that song and remember the emotions that we talked about and who he might be addressing. 
Now I've got another task for you, which is a bit more mundane, on the back of your whiteboard, or the, the side you haven't written on. I'm giving you 15 seconds to think, to write down all the um, punctuation you can think of. All right, 15 seconds, go. So, what have we got? Do you want to call out some uh, some wild card? Uh, what are these um, square brackets? I'm sure there's an official name for those. <laughs> square brackets. Square brackets. So. <laughs> what else have we got? Quotation. Quotation marks. Yeah. Quotes and quotes. 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 Who can tell me the most feared punctuation on earth? Semicolon. Semicolon. There it is, coming to get you. What's the semicolon for? Scaring you. Proving you've been to university. That's the main thing. Does anyone know how do you use a semicolon? Groups of things which are related in the sentence. Continuing the same theme. It's like commas, but for lexical chunks, I guess. Something like that. That's impressive, yeah. yeah. So to, to join two related sentences together. If you're reading a sentence with a semicolon in the, in the middle, what's the pause? How long do you pause for? Pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> it is? Three quarters of a second. second. Uh, in relation to other uh, punctuation. It's, it's a little bit shorter than a full stop, but longer than a comma. Yeah. And whoever came up with that, I could probably <laughs> wring their neck. <laughs> so, um, a lot of the time in creative writing, uh, the semicolon can be used for an emotional pause, okay? So, uh, with that in mind, and you've got your reference point of all your uh, punctuation marks, I'm going to give you a verse from the song, and with your partner, I want you to punctuate it in a way that gives it emotion. And I want you to think about the emotions that we came up with when we were listening um, to the song. So you might want some dramatic pauses. You might want some run-on lines to show the frustration. You decide, okay? So. I need to let you. Yeah. I thought it was a problem. Yeah. 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 I can indeed. <laughs> I'm time wealthy at the moment, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Now, what I want you to do is, this is the most important part, I think this is where we're all going to bond. I want you to turn lovingly to your partner and read the paragraph you just punctuated and remember to pause for the correct length of time each punctuation mark requires. So you're reading out that verse with as much emotion as your punctuation will allow. So one of you is the reader, the other sits back and enjoys the flow of emotions. Okay, off you go. That's Oh, sorry. I need to believe you know, 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 you know,
point. Um, it can help the development of an argument or a debate and it can develop higher order thinking skills. So instead of just there's the language point, that's how it's used, you start to use your own critical thinking to use the language point and to see how it's used in real life situations. Um, but the key thing for me and what I really struggled with when I, when I taught and trained in the UK was trying to make it meaningful. It's like what Peter said when I began training first, the trainer saying, don't tag it on as a starter. It's, it shouldn't be tagged on as a starter. It needs to have meaning. But the problem was nobody ever saw it. So we were all really confused for about a year, going around trying to stick in Simpsons clips all over the place, and it just wasn't working. But it was like the experience, you just get the hang of it. Um, so again, to go back to that point, um, allow it to become the text or the main content of the lesson. <laughs> 